one of the first questions uh, that I have um, that I get asked quite often is where do I get my ideas from? And to be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. So, you know, I guess we'll start with, huh, I don't know. Let's just do like a, two cartoony eyeballs, you know, that kind of look like this. You know, the ones that look like that. Not well, quite a bit different from what I'm used to doing, but you know, why not roll with it? Um, and I, that's kind of a difficult question to always answer, you know, when someone's like, where do you get your ideas from? You know, there's not really a particular place. Like I don't go to like Tumblr or Instagram for like, you know, inspiration. Well, sometimes I do, but like, you know, that's not where I get, you know, my, a lot of my ideas just come from life in general. Like you have to just be able to, you know, make connections on life. Really, that's how you kind of come up with an original idea is, you know, you have to combine like a hundred other ideas that already exist to come up with something that no one's really thought of before. And, you know, there's a lot of things that I just look at in life as well where I, it just kind of comes to me, you know, like I'll be looking at a lamp and then next thing you know, I have an idea for something that has nothing to do with a lamp. It's just, I don't know, somehow I'm able to draw a lamp to this, to this, to this, to this. And, you know, I go like from A to Z and Z is the idea that I have. And A is just something completely different. You have to just keep on like asking like, well, what if you did this to this? What if you added this? What if you took away this? What if you combined these two things? You know, it takes a lot more like actually like messing around like with, you know, like a little like playground program in your head where you're just kind of throwing things together and taking things off and you know that's kind of like how ideas develop uh, for me at least you know it has nothing to do with like you know looking at this and like a piece of art I saw on Instagram being like oh I should I should do something like very similar to that and you know like that's how I was at first I think that's how like a lot of beginners start like including myself is you know you just imitate your favorite artists which you know there's nothing wrong with that I mean you don't know anything about art to begin with you know, so where are you going to start? Obviously by imitating someone that's already like a master at it. And, you know, through that you learn, you know, a thousand different techniques and, you know, why they draw like this. Because, you know, since you try to copy their work, you're going to you know, run into the same techniques that they use. And it's going to just be trial and error trying to figure out, like, how did they accomplish that? And through that trial and error, you will figure out, like, the ins and outs, like, the 360, everything that encapsulates encapsulates that idea or technique that they use and I think that's what like really helped me you know growing up and you know not like just being more self-taught than anything else you know I think for my acrylic painting stuff the only time I ever like looked into any actual like um you know like learning something besides just trial and error is I watched one Bob Ross episode and painted along with him and I learned so much and then I haven't like you know, looked into anything with acrylic painting since, even though I do quite a few of them these days. But yeah, I always, I always think trial and error is the best, even if it's not the most efficient way sometimes. I, I still really enjoy the process because, you know, it's, it's just under my control. You know, there's no one else telling me what to do. And so, you know, I'll figure it out myself. And usually it comes out of success because I'm just really patient and I'll make sure to be very tedious about everything and make sure I'm not going to miss out on any details. You know, so, you know, I guess that's where I get just your my ideas for life, or from life, I guess. You know, it's always kind of difficult, especially in this day and age on TikTok, because everyone's so driven by just aesthetics of everything. You know, I love this aesthetic here. And, you know, aesthetics isn't everything. That's That always kind of annoys me, you know, when people just go off aesthetics. Because you're only going to get so far. There's no, like, originality in an aesthetic that's already made. It's the same thing as just, you know, a different art style that, you know, you're trying to copy. You know, you're trying to find your own aesthetic or your own style. And, you know, through finding that style or aesthetic, you're going to have to, you know, copy a lot of things along the way. And, you know, start, like, infusing them together and, you know, freaking it a different way. You know, and that's when an artist starts making original work is when they've, you know, built up the fundamentals and you know, the skill through trial and error and they're able to create stuff on their own eventually. And then the second question that I get, probably even more than the first question that I just answered, is what pen do I use? 
and usually when people ask that question, it's I'm using these Faber-Castell pens. But that question always annoys me. I mean, I do get it a lot, uh, but at the same time, like I understand why they'd ask, but like there's a, another part of me that's like, man, just figure it out yourself because that's what I had to do. And I think that was, you know, the best way. That was the best learning experience for me, just trying to figure out, you know, what art supplies were the best and which were not because I could look out for the quality in all the products and I could you know, really assess and analyze, you know, what's good about this. And it was almost like, you know, as I grew as an artist and, you know, I leveled up, my art supplies also leveled up along with me, which is kind of cool. Because, you know, I had no, uh, like, frame of reference for, you know, what pens I should use. You know, especially in elementary, I was just using whatever I had from, like, my school supplies. And then in middle school, I heard about these Sharpie fine liners, and I did all my work in those. I was like, wow, look at these. Like, fine lines are way better than these just normal, like, pilot pens. And then, you know, eventually I, I was in, like, Hobby Lobby one day, and I saw these Micron pens that were, like, best pens in, for artists. And so I tried those, and... You know, I immediately noticed the quality difference in like, you know, how much the ink spreads on the paper. I was like, wow, look how fine the lines were. And, you know, through that, I was able to like actually understand the ins and outs of all the products I use instead of just jumping straight to, you know, the best one. And, you know, not knowing, you know, I imagine me like as, you know, first starting out drawing or, you know, first starting out like trying to ink something for the first time and trying one of these felt tip pens because, you know, they're very fragile. You don't want to push down hard on them. Like, I'd probably just go through like 10 pens in a week just because of how hard I'd, I would probably push down because I have no experience with it. But, you know, as I worked my way up after Microns, I found out about these Faber-Castells, tried those, and the nibs lasted like 10 times longer than the Microns and, you know, they're better quality. And it's like, wow. So that's the next step. And, you know, I think there is a step above this one, too. So who knows? But I, I always think that's, you know, the best way to do things is just trial and error. Trial and error over and, and over again, you know, until you figure it out yourself. Because then you'll have the best understanding and you'll be able to talk the talk, you know, if anyone asks you any questions about the tools you use. Because you'll you'll know, it, like, the back of your hand, basically. Because that's all you know to work with. Jeez, I have no idea where this is going. I just drew a cat. That's kind of boring, I would say. So let's draw this other creature eating them because I don't know what else to draw. We're, we're gonna go like this. Yeah! Look at that. I love giving the teeth 3D effect, you know? Let's put some gums on this guy for once. Usually I don't draw gums, but that's what we'll do. For the last like two years, I've just been drawing like straight with pen, just freestyling things, which just was a great way to like actually build up my skill to like be able to just draw like freehanded without, you know, erasing anything, which is, you know, a great thing to develop. But recently I've been just penciling out stuff beforehand, which is not something that I've done in a while since my like comic book years. Um, or, you know, when I wanted to be a comic book artist back in middle school. And what's great about that is, you know, I could alter things again and, you know, maybe I shouldn't do that and here's a better idea instead. And, you know, that's how I've been coming up with pieces like this, you know, that are a lot more planned out. Um, because, you know, I've done the details in pencil and I could, you know, go over the details in ink and, you know, it's kind of like a the rough draft to the final draft instead of just one thing, which is nice. So I spend more time on it, and in the end, I think it comes out a lot better in terms of quality. But, you know, it's not as fun to watch if, you know, there's already pencil lines underneath, and now you're just watching them ink over it. But I think it's good that I go back and just refine my skills overall, just so I have better quality artwork in general. But, yeah. As you can see here, I haven't really decided what I'm doing for the face yet, so I'm... I don't know, this thing kind of almost looks like a tire to me, in my opinion. Let's draw, like, the mouth going down, right? 
Eh, this makes sense, whatever. A lot of my stuff just doesn't make sense most of the time because it's just from my imagination. It's not supposed to be like realistically correct of any sorts. It's like I'll get a lot of people just like telling me like, hey man, you should really work on your anatomy or you know, your perspective with this. But you know, I honestly think that is like what makes my work cool is that it's almost like, you know, it, if a child was able to depict their imagination like through art more. If that makes sense. You know, like, if you look at my art a lot closer, especially, like, the ones that have, like, cityscapes or other things going around and, like, going on in them, if you look closer, you realize that the perspective is way off and, like, the proportions are way off in this. But, like, you know, from first glance, it does look correct. Like, everything looks correct on it. There's nothing wrong. And that's kind of where that, like, childlike imagination comes into things. Because it's just kind of my version of how I see things and how, you know, a kid would see things from, you know, like their wonky perspective, if that makes sense. Let's give this guy an eyeball, how about? Look at that right there. Boom, boom, boom. Let's give him the other eyeball, you know, I can't forget about that, right? And then sometimes I like to give him a third eye because, you know, I don't want to give the student a nose. He doesn't need a nose. He just needs to know that he needs to eat cats like this. <laughs> All right. There we go. There's his third eyeball going the other way. Put some more of that on there. All right, another question that I get that I've not really answered too often is uh, how do you not lose motivation? Because, you know, a lot of my pieces will take, you know, anywhere from like 30 minutes, which, you know, will be this one pretty much, and then all the way up to like 70 hours. And, you know, it can be discouraging, you know, like, because you don't, sometimes I just don't know what it's going to be like, even going like 20, 30 hours into it, you know, there's... Like, there's definitely been paintings where I've put in 30 hours and I've like, well, I'm about to try something I've never done before. And if this doesn't work, then the painting just might be ruined. Um, and, you know, sometimes that could definitely make you lose motivation. Or, you know, you just stop and it's been a tedious, like, day of just working on, you know, this drawing or painting and you're just unhappy with it. And you still know that you have, like, more over half of it to go before you even finish. And you're like, why? Why did I even decide to do this? And to be honest, like, I don't really know why I don't lose motivation anymore. I guess it's maybe for the same reason that I don't have artist block these days. Um, and that's all just because, like, I don't know. I There's something in my head that's just like, you are never, ever, ever, ever going to run out of ideas. So there is no need to worry about ever losing motivation because you, there's... What do you have to lose? Like, you could literally just keep on making art forever and each piece will be, you know, different. I don't know. There's just one day where I, like, just realized that, like, my mind is basically, like, an endless pool of ideas that I could just pull from. I don't, there's, like, an algorithm I figured out where it's just, like, if I combine this, this, and this, and if this, then boom, you got a new idea. And so, you know, that's pretty much what I've been doing since then. It's just, and I think it's also just from doodling so much in school and all I've wanted to do is just draw all day. And I just, you know, I don't really, another part of not losing motivation for me at least is, you know, my biggest, the person that I'm trying to prove myself to is myself. You know, there's no one else I'm trying to prove myself to. I, there's a lot of people out there that want to become an artist because, you know, they want to be, I guess, famous or, you know, they want to be well known for their work. And so, you know, they're more worried about what other people think about their art. And, you know, that could, that's such a, like, um, you know, using other people to keep you motivated is not a safe way to, you know, it's not going to be an end. It's going to be a limited resource, basically. There's no, like, but if you just use yourself as the person that you're trying to impress, then you pretty much have like unlimited amount of uh, levels you could go up because you know you only want to keep on reaching higher and higher. There's no like you know being discouraged by uh, what so and so thinks or what your mom thinks because you're only just trying to impress yourself. And I guess that's uh, why I don't ever lose motivation because it's just always been that. 
it's always just been for fun, just for me. You know, no one else needs to really, you know, worry about what I'm drawing right now. As long as I could just do better than what I did on my last drawing, I'll be happy with it. And so, you know, I will challenge myself. All of these, you know, all of my drawings have just been kind of more challenges to myself to see if I could take it to the next level in one way or another. And I think that's really the main source of your inspiration, or for anyone's inspiration, should be like, you know, they want, you should want to see yourself doing better, you know, whether that be like a day from now, a week from now, a year from now. You know, you want to try to reach what you believe to be your full potential. You know, the only thing that I try to do every day is just try to, you know, that hopefully one day I will reach, you know, that my fullest potential that I could ever, you know, like there's the Cody that I am right now, but, you know, the Cody 10 years from now is probably just waiting for me to get to um, him, basically, if that makes any sense. I don't know. One thing about me is I, I just don't like to talk in general. I need to work on my communication skills. There we go, now we got this alien here with a large jaw. You know, I wonder what this alien would look like if he wasn't, you know, if his mouth was closed. I feel like his mouth would be like completely normal. Like what if he's just a normal dude and everything, just when he opens his mouth, it just rah. That'd be kind of funny. I always wish I had a team of animators just to animate whatever drawing I had. Like even if it's just some simple like this, like can you draw like this normal dude and then when he opens up it goes to this drawing right here and then like back down to normal guy. Like that'd just be awesome to have a team of people that just, you know, realize your ideas for you. That's kind of the direction I want to head in is, you know, have a team of people so I could be working on like 10 projects at once and, you know, I'd be able to get them all done in time because it's basically like 10 versions of me all working on you know, all the little parts. You know, Warhol does it. You know, uh, who else? Well, I know a lot of artists have a team of people that do their work for them as well. And they're just, you know, Takashi Murakami, for example. You know, he just comes up with the idea itself and then he has a team of people work for him. You know, some people get upset for that. They're like, well, that isn't, that isn't art. They should be crediting everyone else. Uh, the last question that I get quite often is, um, who are your favorite artists and how have they impacted your work? And, you know, there's so many artists, so many of them. And, you know, it's like really like, you know, what time in my life, like what was, who's the artist impacted me the most? Like I remember being in, uh, once I started really looking into artists, I was in middle school. You know, because before that, I was just drawing shapes and buildings and, you know, just trying to compete with my friend. There wasn't really any, like, looking into, you know, certain artists that I found interesting and trying to copy their work up until, like, sixth grade when I got into comic books. You know, and I started collecting comic books out. And I remember seeing, like, the first Wolverine comic ever made, and I was, like, just blown away by how, like, cool the cover looked. And so I looked into the artist who happened to be Frank Miller, and so, you know, I was a big fan of his work. Same with a lot of the old, like, Captain American Avengers, because I was a huge comic book collector. So, you know, I really looked up to, like, Jack Kirby, and I got in to, you know, the whole thing on Instagram with all these comic book artists that were posting at the time, and that's when I started my own art account. And so, you know, I really looked up to those people like Jack Kirby and Frank Miller, who just did beautiful work. You know, Jack Kirby was able to just draw things on a whim, just like this, but, you know, a lot better. You know, he could just draw Captain America, like, he'll just draw a leg here, then an arm, and then, like, he'll just fill in the rest of it. And, you know, he has this full drawing of Captain America deflecting a bullet, like, with his shield. And it's like, he just did that all from his head. There was no line work that just... There was no pencil lines there. He just went for it. And it's just crazy how it turned out. And that's, you know, that was one of my first big inspirations. And I, you know, ended up copying a lot of his work, you know, growing up all throughout middle school. And, you know, I got into other artists like Rob Liefeld. You know, there's there's thousands of them. And so, you know, that's who really inspired me. And that's who uh, I copied a lot. And a lot of my work is this very, like, sketchy. And, you know, sometimes anatomy is, like, almost correct um, in terms of, like, how I draw like muscular dudes that are like, you know, or like demons, you know, it's because I was always drawing these like big superheroes that were like strong, you know, whether that be the Hulk or Deadpool or Spider-Man or, you know, so I learned how to draw very masculine superheroes. So that was my like first inspiration. But as I got into high school, that was when things um, took a different turn. 
and I didn't want to do, you know, I didn't want to be a comic artist anymore. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to be, but, you know, I was still very interested in art, so I just continued to just do whatever piqued my interest. You know, I was really, like, pressured by myself to find my own style because, you know, being part of the Instagram game since, like, 2015, you know, all of these artists that were big, you know, they had one style that they stuck to, and that's, you know, they're so popular, and I was like, ah, well, that's how I make it big on Instagram, if I just stick to one style, but I couldn't for the life of me, because I wanted to try watercolor, I wanted to try this, this, I wanted to try this style and that style, inspired by this artist and that artist, and so, you know, my page was, like, all over the place, and, you know, I think that's, that was just part of the process, that's part of the process for, like, any artist, I realized, you know, after I got out of that stage, that you just need to continue to build up, you know, your fundamentals and whatever you think is fun. And, you know, I eventually realized I should just be drawing whatever I think would be cool or fun to do. And that's what I do now to this day. That's why I'm just drawing this, you know, I'm not taking it seriously. And to be honest, I don't take much of my work, like, too serious. Because I want, like, the, the reason why I do art is because it's fun for me to do. And it's what I want to do. So, you know, I can take pieces seriously, but at the end of the day, I'm still having fun with it. That's all I want from a work of art, you know, that's why I refuse to do commissions. Because the reason why I got into art is because I want to put my own ideas onto the paper, not someone else's. But yeah, as I got into uh, high school, Peter Draws, you know, was a huge influence on my work. You know, doing all these abstract, um, you know, drawings that didn't look like anything in particular, but he was so detailed with the texture and everything. You know, that inspired me to do the same thing as him. And so, you know, I have, I still hold a lot of the same, like, texture patterns that he uses on his work, except my, uh, as I went through high school, I took more of a surrealism approach on things, and that's kind of where I am now. And, you know, stuff is changing again. You know, I got into Studio Ghibli, um, in 2020, and that's kind of been my main inspiration, uh, is Hayao Miyazaki and his works, and that's kind of why I want to go into animation in the future instead of being a traditional artist my entire life but yeah that's kind of where i am now i think it's you know it's important that you do copy your favorite artist once in a while just so you get a better understanding of their work and why not you know that you know it's not just because they inspire me just through their work i also want to carry on like the legacy of what they created and go like a step beyond you know, what they've did. I mean, I, I think that's kind of what any generation of people should do is, you know, they have to learn everything that the generation before them learned and then take it a step beyond. And I think a lot of people get stuck in that step of just trying to learn everything the generation did previously and we get caught up in those mistakes and, you know, whatever it is that held that previous generation back. Yeah, I think this piece is pretty much done here. I mean, I could just continue to add on a background, but you know, I don't really have much to talk about right now. I think pretty much this is finished. Um, oh, I always, I love doing my signature. This is something I've been doing since like middle school, I think. You know, I just, I always had fun writing my own name. Not for like any narcissist reason, it was just always super fun and I'd fill up my paper of uh, just my signature over and over and over again. And then, you know, you'd get those annoying teachers that are like, remember me when you're famous. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, same thing to do with drawing. I just filled up my papers just full of drawings. And, you know, I'd draw like a hundred eyeballs in a row and then a hundred noses in the next class. And then on this worksheet, and you know, not many teachers failed me because of drawing. Actually, a lot of teachers like appreciated my work, even if I didn't do the work on the worksheet. They're still like, wow, that's really cool. Except for my English teacher. Um, I think it was either my junior or sophomore year, my English teacher would fail me if I did a single doodle on the paper. And so, you know, that was difficult. I probably would have ended up with like a B, B plus in there instead of a C, C minus if I wouldn't have drawn so much. But I just can't help myself sometimes. Sometimes it's just a way I could learn and as I need to be doodling and stuff. But yeah, it looks like all the time paid off and doodling and drawing in class. So anyways... Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I'll probably do more of these soon. I just need to get better at talking and stuff, but yeah. I guess that's all for this video. Uh, maybe I'll give this away with like a random print order or something. So yeah. Alright. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. The video's over.